celebrate God's presence with us, to celebrate this community and the support and love that we find in this place. And so I'm going to just invite you to pause for a moment, take a nice deep breath, and recognize that the Spirit of God is all around you in this place. And we are then going to begin with some singing.
starts today in Psalm 139, verses 1 through 12 and 23 through 24. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You have me in, behind, and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall come over me, and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day. For darkness is as light to you. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. If there is any wicked way in me, and lead me to the way everlasting. Bring the breath of God to life. Thank you. 
join me in our call to worship. God's Spirit calls to our spirits. Invite us to worship. God's Spirit calls to our spirits. Invite us by love. God's Spirit calls to our spirits. Call us by name. Call us to grow in faith. Call us to be made new. We come to worship in this season of the Spirit. Amen. Now is our time to greet one another. Maybe meet someone yeah. new. Come be with me.
I wouldn't get to heaven. How many of you have heard this text in that way? And absorbed it that way? Now, I did not come from an evangelical church, so that is not what I was taught by my own church. But that didn't mean my friends who were evangelicals weren't constantly saying this to me. And so it was always this struggle until little by little, and I have this turning point when I was in confirmation and my Lutheran pastor said, when people ask you if you're born again, say yes. And again, and again, and again, and again. Now, don't hear me wrong. There are people who need conversion moments. If we look at our scripture, Paul needed a conversion moment. Paul, the man who was Saul, Saul who was condemning and killing on a rampage against those people he called Christians, he needed a divine slap upside the head, if you will, right? I don't like violent images, but sometimes you just need to be stopped in your tracks. Sometimes you just can't see that which is spiritual until somebody points it out to you and you have this conversion moment. But does that really mean that's the only way to know God? Does it really mean that it's the only way to get into heaven? And so we pick this apart a little bit. And the first thing is doing a little research on where this came from. Because the you must be born again to get into heaven, you must be saved. Theology of evangelicalism does not come from the first people of Christ. It comes from the 18th century, 17th, 18th century, somewhere in there, and the revivalism movements in the United States and Britain, and, and I don't know what was going on at that time. I don't know what it was that they thought they needed to stop and change and get a little bit more Holy Spirit in their lives, but that's when this theology, this doctrine was created. And so it gives us a little bit of permission to step back and say, it's okay if we're not there, right? It gives us a little bit of permission to say, I don't believe that everybody prior to 1600 didn't go to heaven because they didn't have this theology. So, what does it mean for us? First of all, you've got to ask yourself, do you believe the Romans passage that says nothing can separate us from the love of God or do you not believe that? Right? Because that's at the core of my faith. And if nothing can separate us from the love of God, except our own barriers we put up, then how can there be any formula that we need in order to get to God, in order to win God's acceptance, in order to be allowed into the pearly gates, if you will? And then, I'm always caught by that line, inherit eternal life. Eternal life, for me, is not synonymous with heaven. What happens after I die, I'm not quite sure. I'm pretty sure God's got it under control. But eternal is not a future word. Eternal is a present word and a past word. Eternity is all of time. What was, what is, and what will be. So when we only think of it as after I die is eternity, we're missing the depth of life that is right here and right now. We're missing the history of what has been and all of those things that point us to God from our past. So 
So what is it to be born again? Born of the Spirit. I can only speak for myself. But for me, I know that I can get so wrapped up in my headiness. I can get so wrapped up in the rules, in what I'm supposed to do, what I'm not supposed to do, that I miss all of those things that can't be thought out. I miss love. I miss that feeling that you get when you're standing at the lake shore that you just cannot describe. I miss the beauty of connection. If I'm all in my head all the time. And for me, that is what it is to be born of the Spirit. To know, to know without question that there is something beyond all of this physical stuff, this day-to-day -day living. The intangibles of life are as much a part of life, if not more a part of life. They make our lives richer and fuller. And science is telling us they make us healthier. Right? Science is telling us that loneliness, whether you're with people or not, if you, if you feel lonely, it makes you sicker. Community. Love. Laughter. All of those things make us more full human beings and they bring us into the presence of that which is the holiest of all. So that's where I go now when I hear this text. That's where I go when I hear the next one. For God so loved the world, all of creation, that Jesus came to show us the way to a fuller, richer life. To open ourselves to the presence of God all around us. Where does it take you? And have you had time to ponder these points this week? That's how I feel too, kid. My dad grew up in this church, and he had a dream many years ago, many years after this church. And in the dream, he felt Jesus knocking on his heart. 
and he said, who is it? Well, he just felt the heavy powers. He said, who is it? The voice of Jesus. And he said, um, what do you want? And Jesus said, I want to come in. And he said, well, I thought you already were in. And Jesus said, I truly want to come in. And he opened his heart in that dream and let Jesus in. And the rest of our family watched such a change in my dad from that day forward that it influenced all of us in our faith. And it was like a wake-up call, I think. I don't know, or an affirmation of Jesus. And um, those experiences can really be powerful in your life. Born again, I don't know if it's really born again, you know. But, um, isn't that what Nicodemus was struggling with, right? The semantics of what does it mean, this born again? I can't crawl into my mother's womb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the proof is in the change. You know, it changed him so much that he believed it was truly from Christ. When I was in high school, I had a biology teacher who will remain nameless because you're not supposed to mix school and religion. <laughs> as we were studying, they were a very smart person, and as we were studying cells and the way they work and how every cell's got different jobs and all this and that, he simply said that just look around you and you can't believe this all happened by accident. And as a teenager, that stuck with me. And uh, it just changed my way of thinking for a long time. Science is a connection for me with God, right? People talk about them as if they are opposing forces, but um, if science was so clear, there's still so much to learn, right? And, and, and learning more doesn't mean there's no presence of the one who started it all for me. For God so loved the world, right? Is the very next. Very next, I cut it off one verse too early, right? But um, 
born again and again and again and again. Holy One, we have so much on our hearts and in our minds this morning. We are thinking of Doris. Doris, who had knee surgery this week. We ask for your presence, for your healing. Doris, please know we hold you.
with joy, with gratitude. We continue to open ourselves to you day after day after day. And on this day, we speak together those simple words that Jesus encouraged us to say. Creator of all that is, how would be thy name? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory.
today a special offering. We're going to use the prayer basket here um, to help go towards the expense of the lunches that we are providing them. And if there's any leftover money, we will just give it to the group at the end of their concert to the donation fund. So if you are willing to put some money towards that expense, you can put it here in the prayer basket um, and we will do that. We also have some of them might be willing to share that, so we probably are okay. However, if not, we still need um, space for two people to go to a home and um, for you to host them. I believe it's basically just be their transportation back and forth to the church and provide a bed and a bathroom for them. So um, if you have an available spot, let me know. Other than that, I think we're ready to go. So, like Jill said, 7 o'clock tonight. Um, tell all your friends, bring them along, and let's build this church. Thank you. And they should be here around 11.30, so uh, if we are cleaning out the place, we will be able to meet for those who have, who are hosting. I think if we can be here at 11.30, that would be great. Yes? If that's the way I remember it from years past. Uh, um, a reminder, we do not uh, pass baskets uh, anymore at the church, but there are two in the back. One for the regular fund, one for the building. It's the hard hat fund. Um, and so if you would like to support the church in that way, you can do so. Um, I believe this Wednesday, this Wednesday, we have both Safe Space Group, which meets in the other building, and then the um, parents and friends of LGBTQ folk um, group meets in this space, just right at the back of the sanctuary. And um, 6 o'clock for the Safe Space, 6.30 for the parents, friends, and family. What else am I missing? Anything? Any other announcements going once? <laughs> All right. If not, would you please stand for the benediction and hear these words once again from 2 Corinthians 13. <clears throat> Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. Amen.